Welcome to today's training topic on preventing infections during blood glucose monitoring and insulin administration. You can apply the information in this training to any healthcare setting, including, but not limited to, hospitals, various long-term care settings, such as nursing and assisted living facilities, and group homes. It also applies to other settings, such as health fairs, correctional facilities, schools, and camps. Individuals with diabetes frequently have their blood glucose monitored with a point-of-care measuring device. Being able to frequently monitor blood glucose levels is an important tool in diabetes management. Blood glucose monitoring, along with insulin administration, can be accomplished independently by the individual through self-monitoring or with assistance. In assisted monitoring and administration, Another person assists with or performs the glucose monitoring and insulin administration for the individual. There is a risk of spreading blood-borne pathogens, such as hepatitis B, hepatitis C, and HIV, during both glucose testing and insulin administration. Their spread can easily occur when basic infection control practices are not followed. In recent years, outbreaks of hepatitis B associated with blood glucose monitoring have been identified with increasing regularity, particularly in long-term care settings. The risk of spreading infections is present in any setting where point-of-care testing equipment, which includes blood glucose monitoring equipment, is shared. In the last 10 years alone, there have been at least 15 outbreaks of hepatitis B infection associated with individuals failing to follow basic infection control practices. The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention CDC, has become increasingly concerned about the risks of transmitting blood-borne pathogens due to reports of breaches in infection control during assisted blood glucose monitoring and insulin administration across the country. The CDC's concern has led to the announcement of the following public health alert for all persons who assist others with blood glucose monitoring and or insulin administration. Finger stick devices should never be used for more than one person. Use finger stick devices which are single-use and auto-disabling. This makes them the safest choice for both the individual being tested and the worker assisting them. Blood glucose meters should not be shared whenever possible. Assign blood glucose meters to a single person whenever possible. If a meter must be shared, clean and disinfect the meter after every use, according to the manufacturer's instructions. If the manufacturer does not specify how the device should be cleaned and disinfected, then it should not be shared. This will prevent the exposure and potential transfer of blood and infectious agents from one individual to the next. Insulin pens, cartridges, and syringes are for single patient or resident use only and should never be used for more than one person. Let's take a few minutes and discuss the infection control concerns regarding insulin administration. The phrase single patient use means that only one person should ever use a particular item, even if that item is clean and disinfected. As you can guess, because insulin pens are intended for single patient or resident use, they become an infection control risk when they are not used according to the directions. Because there are differences in how pens from different manufacturers work, you should always review and follow the manufacturer's directions when using an insulin pen. Insulin pens are designed to be safe for a single person to use, along with a new needle for each injection. Assign each pen to one person, labeling it appropriately to avoid any pen mix-ups. Never use a pen for more than one person. When this happens, blood-borne pathogens from one individual may be introduced into the next person who uses the pen. Dedicate insulin vials to a single person whenever possible. Insulin vials also represent a risk for infection. If an insulin vial must be used for more than one person, store and prepare the insulin in a dedicated med prep area outside of the patient or resident care environment and away from potentially contaminated equipment. When preparing the insulin, disinfect the top of the stopper with an alcohol pad and then enter the vial with a new needle and new syringe. Let's look together at the following review of unsafe practices and see if you can spot what is wrong in each of the following scenes. This is Angela. She is assisting the residents with their blood glucose monitoring. She uses the same finger stick device but changes the lancets between the residents. What was wrong with this picture? You are correct. 
A dedicated fingerstick device should be used for each resident. It is possible for the fingerstick device to have contamination, including blood-borne pathogens on it, which then can be spread when used on one resident and then the next, even if the lancet itself is changed. This is Eric. He is using the facility glucose meter for multiple patients to measure their blood glucose before dinner in the dining area. If he sees blood on the meter, he plans to wipe it off with an alcohol pad between patients. What's wrong with this picture? Yes, you are right! Blood work should not be performed in the dining room area where food and drink will be consumed. You are right again if you said that a meter should be dedicated to each resident. If that isn't possible, then the manufacturer's directions for cleaning and disinfecting between individuals must be followed. Not simply when visible blood is noted. Microscopic or invisible amounts of blood can contain enough virus or bacteria to infect the next resident. The glucose meter manufacturer does not recommend using alcohol to disinfect this meter. Know and follow the manufacturer's directions for disinfection. Did you see Eric going from one resident to another without removing his gloves and performing hand hygiene between each resident? Cleaning hands with soap and water or alcohol-based hand rub is called hand hygiene. It's one of the most important infection control practices that helps keep us safe and healthy and is required between patient or resident contacts. The main unsafe practices often observed in clinical practice include using fingerstick devices for more than one person, using a blood glucose meter for more than one person without cleaning and disinfecting it between uses, using insulin pens for more than one person, and failing to change gloves and perform hand hygiene between fingerstick procedures. As we conclude our training today, we would like to thank you for your participation in this class. Here's your chance to see how much information you remember from today's training. Thank you for what you do to safely monitor blood glucose levels and administer insulin to patients and residents. Help spread the practices you learned today to your co-workers and colleagues.